Summary of Lolita by Vladimir Nobokov The story is introduced by a fictional psychologist named John Ray Jr., Ph.D. as a case study in abnormal psychology. He says that it was written by a killer and a sexual pervert named Humbert Humbert, who calls himself by that name in the text. Both the author and the girl he took, Lolita, are now dead. The first one died of a heart attack in jail while waiting for trial, and the second one died giving birth on Christmas Day. Both of them died in 1952. Ray ends his introduction by praising the writer's genius, criticizing his actions, and suggesting the book as a warning, a case study, and a guide to building a more moral society. The intro is from August 5, 1955. Humbert's story starts with the story of Lolita's predecessor, who was his first love. At the Hotel Marana on the French Riviera, young Humbert meets Annabelle Lee. Annabelle's parents are friends with his parents, who own the hotel. The two kids fall in love and try hard to find a way to hook up without getting caught. They almost make it, but two divers find them at the last minute. Annabelle dies of typhoid not long after Humbert stops seeing her. Humbert's idea of nymphotry is based on Annabelle until he meets Lolita. Humbert goes to Paris when he is a young adult. There and in London, he learns about literature and starts writing pieces for magazines. He fights his desire for the young girls he finds beautiful, whom he calls nymphettes. However, he takes every chance he can to be near them. He goes to whores to satisfy his sex needs. One of these whores, Monique, looks so much like a nymph that it really stands out to him. He tries to find a child prostitute in the bad parts of Paris, but he gives up after a madam tricks him out of his money. Humbert Humbert hopes that the sexual and household routines of marriage will help him deal with his strange urges. In 1935, he gets married to Valeria, his doctor's daughter. It goes okay for four years, but then Valeria breaks up with him and starts dating a Russian cab driver called Maximovich. Humbert goes to the US, where an uncle has left him a small amount of money every year if he moves there and shows interest in business. Humbert moves to New York and gets a job at a university where he writes a book about French literature. His mental health gets worse, and he ends up spending several years in a hospital. Between stays, he goes on a research trip to the Arctic, where he acts as a psychological recorder. The report he writes is completely made up. Soon after, he has to go back to the psychiatric hospital, where he takes pride in being able to trick his doctors. When Humbert Humbert got out of the hospital in 1947, he moved to New England. He makes plans to stay with a family named the McCoos in the town of Ramsdale. He is happy to hear that the McCoos have a baby girl. Mr. McCoo tells him that their house burned down when he gets there. He tells Humbert instead about a mother and daughter who live at 342, Lawn Avenue. They are the Hayes's. Charlotte Hayes, who lives in the house, shows Humbert Humbert around. He doesn't like the way the room looks, and he has the bad feeling that Charlotte is playing with him. He's almost decided not to take the job when he sees Charlotte's daughter Dolores lying in the sun on the patio. He falls in love right away, thinking that this 12-year-old nymphette is Annabelle, the girl he loved when he was younger. He moves in after accepting Charlotte's offer. Humbert Humbert starts writing in a journal. He writes about Lolita and describes his dreams and plans for getting her. He tries to be as quiet as possible, but he still manages to kiss or touch her more than once. Lolita and her mother fight all the time. Her mother thinks of her as a little brat. Charlotte is always trying to get Lolita out of the way so she can spend time alone with Humbert Humbert, with whom she clearly wants to have an affair. Lolita, on the other hand, likes Humbert. One day, Humbert and Lolita are left alone in the house. While they are sitting on the Davenport and singing together, he uses her legs to masturbate through his dressing gown and then touches her thigh. Humbert is very happy that he has finally enjoyed a nymphette without her noticing. Charlotte takes Lolita to Camp Q, which is what he calls summer camp. Humbert says that Lolita runs up the stairs to kiss him before she goes. After the mother and daughter leave, Humbert's maid, Louise, gives him a note. 
It's a love letter from Charlotte, asking him to either marry her as soon as she gets back or to leave right away. Humbert goes through with it because he wants to stay close to Lolita. Charlotte is now Mrs. Humbert when she gets back. Charlotte tells Humbert while they are swimming in the hourglass lake that she plans to send Lolita to boarding school as soon as she gets back from camp. Humbert is very angry. He thinks about drowning Charlotte, but then changes his mind. He is desperate to find ways to assert himself in the marriage so that Lolita will stay close to him. Charlotte finds Humbert Humbert's book one day when he is out getting sleeping pills for Charlotte and her daughter so that he can molest Lolita without being seen. When he gets home, she yells at him and calls him a monster. Then she runs out into the street with letters that prove he did something wrong. There, while Humbert is talking on the phone, a car runs over and kills her. Humbert quickly puts things in place so that he can take care of Lolita. He makes John and Jean Farlow, who are close friends of the family, believe that he is Lolita's real father from an affair he had with Charlotte a long time ago. Lolita is waiting for Humbert at Camp Q. He tells her that her mother is sick and takes her to a motel in Britain called the Enchanted Hunters. He gives her sleepy pills and then tries to sexually assault her in the bed. He is shocked when she wakes up, so he stops trying to molest her. At least according to Humbert, Lolita starts having sex with Humbert in the morning. He thinks that at summer camp, she was corrupted. When they get back on the highway, Lolita says she will call her mother or the cops and tell them everything. Humbert then tells her that her mother has died so Lolita has nowhere else to go since she is now an orphan. Humbert and Lolita spend the next two years traveling around the United States. They stay in hotels and visit tourist spots all over the country. He fills Lolita's days with a lot of fun activities to keep her from wanting to run away. He also tells her that if she tells on him, she'll be sent to a bad foster home. Humbert gets Lolita whatever she wants while they are on the road. She starts tennis lessons when she gets to California. In the summer of 1948, Humbert Humbert starts to worry about his ability to stay on the road financially and legally. He and Lolita decide to live in Beardsley, a college town in the East, where a French friend named Gaston Godin can help him get a job as a professor. He puts Lolita in the neighborhood school for girls. Lolita makes new friends and learns to live in her new home. But the school's headmistress, a woman named Pratt, starts to worry that something might be wrong at home. She tells Humbert Humbert that he should let Lolita go on dates and meet new people. She also wants Lolita to be in the school play, which is a production of The Enchanted Hunters by Claire Quilty. As play practices start, Humbert and Lolita's relationship gets worse. He doesn't trust her and worries that she has told everything to a friend named Mona Dahl. When Humbert finds out that Lolita hasn't been going to her piano lessons, they get into a big fight and Lolita runs away. When he finds her in a phone box, she has a completely different attitude. She asks Humbert if they can go on the road again, but she wants to choose the route. Humbert and Lolita went on another cross-country trip in May 1949. Humbert gets worried as they drive because someone who looks like his uncle is following them in a red car and Lolita seems to be talking to this person when Humbert isn't looking. Humbert gets more and more worried because he thinks Lolita is trying to get away from him with the person who is after them. He finally comes to the conclusion that he's being too suspicious. Lolita gets sick in a place called Elphinstone. Humbert he takes her to the local hospital, where she stays for a few days. When it's time to pick her up, Humbert is shocked to hear that Lolita's uncle has already taken her. Humbert finds out that Lolita and the man who was chasing them have run away. Humbert, Humbert spends the rest of the summer looking for Lolita and her lover. The man seems to have known that the police would be looking into him, because he has put funny fake names in all of the motel records. Humbert, Humbert is impressed by how smart the man is, but he can't find him in the end. He loses hope and starts a two-year relationship with a woman named Rita, who is a bit of a drunk and a bum. In September of 1952, Lolita sends a letter to Humbert Humbert. She is married to an engineer named Dick, and the two of them need money so that Dick can take a new job in Alaska. 
even though she doesn't give her exact address, Humbert Humbert is still able to find her. He brings a gun because he thinks her husband is the person who stole her from him and wants to kill him. Humbert Humbert comes home, and Lolita meets him at the door. He still loves her even though she has grown up, is pregnant, and is no longer a nymphet. Humbert decides not to kill her husband when he sees that he is not the same man who took her. Humbert tries to get Lolita to say who her lover was when she ran away from him with him. She doesn't want to tell him, but she does. It was Claire Quilty, a writer her mother knew, and she ran into him at practices for the Beardsley School's production of his play. Lolita fell in love with Quilty and ran away with him, but she left him when he asked her to be in his child pornography movies. Humbert Humbert gives Lolita the money she asked for and begs her to run away with him. Lolita sees for the first time that her abuser and father really did love her. She is shocked and maybe even moved, but she refuses. Humbert Humbert drives away in tears because he is sad. Humbert, Humbert goes back to Ramsdale to see Jack Windmuller so that he can give Lolita the land that used to belong to Charlotte. He walks by the old house at 342 while he's there. He tries to shock and upset everyone he meets in town, including Mrs. Chatfield and Claire's uncle Ivor Quilty, who is a dentist. Humbert goes out of Ramsdale to find Claire Quilty. On his trip, he starts to understand how badly he hurt Lolita, and this gives him a moral awakening. He follows Quilty to Paver Manor, a big, broken-down house. When he wakes up, the door is open, so he takes his gun and goes inside to look for Quilty. When he finds him and threatens him, Quilty is not scared. He alternates between making fun of Humbert, ignoring him, and talking to him. The two pedophiles, who turn out to be very similar people, have a long, slow fight with a lot of fighting and missed shots. This is a spoof of fight scenes in modern westerns and other Hollywood movies. Last but not least, Humbert shoots Quilty several times. Every time the writer gets hurt, he acts out a scene, he plays the piano, says dramatic lines like those in a play, and jumps up and down. In the end, he dies. Humbert leaves the house and tells Quilty's drunk young friends on the ground floor about the murder. They either don't believe him or don't care. When Humbert leaves Paver Manor, he drives on the wrong side of the highway until the cops stop him. He swerves the car up the hill and waits for the police to catch him. About the author Vladimir Nobokov was born into an elite family in St. Petersburg during the last decades of the Russian Empire. He learned to speak, read, and write in Russian, French, and English. His father was a liberal leader, and when the Tsar was in power, he was the Minister of Justice. The Bolshevik Revolution of 1917 forced the Nobokovs to leave Russia. They ran away to England and then to Berlin, where they joined the growing number of Russian people who had left their country. Vladimir went to Cambridge University to study biology and writing before going back to his family in Berlin. In 1922, Nabokov's father was killed by an attacker whose real target was someone else. Forty years later, Nobokov wrote about the event in his book Pale Fire. Hope we summarized it fully and you liked it. Please hit the like button and subscribe to our channel so that we are motivated to create more videos.